Thank you. I now welcome representatives from the Wesley Medical uh, Research Centre. Uh, Dr Claudia Gjergjeman, Chief Executive Officer, and Mrs Kelly McGrath, who is the Mental Health uh, Care Navigator for Navicare. Can I ask you to make a brief opening statement? Yes, and thank you so much to the Mental Health Select Committee for inviting us today. We're really pleased to be here to have this opportunity. Um, you've already heard enough, I think, about the suicide rates almost doubling in rural and regional Queensland uh, and the issues uh, around access to mental health. Um, we've already heard that it's difficult to attract and retain quality staff. There's a lack of funding. There's that ex those extensive waiting lists uh, and people need to travel long distances to access mental health services. So Wesley Medical Research, in collaboration with QUT and very importantly, uh, local stakeholders, uh, co-designed a bespoke model of mental health care. We applied rigorous health services and implementation science methodology and consulted over 60 uh, stakeholders in the Bowen Basin region to begin with, from local health providers, the primary health network, council representatives and community organisations. And what those stakeholders told us is that help seekers want to speak to a human being and they want to be able to walk into a building where they can speak to that human being but they don't want that building to say, come here if you've got mental health issues. Um, and basically, if they can have that initial conversation with a person, then they're more likely to access telehealth services as well. So as you can imagine, you know, people that are looking uh, for support um, often are in the frame of mind to understand what's available, where do they need to go, what are the eligibility criteria, how much will it cost them and all of those things. So what we've designed with the community is this new layered mental health navigation model and it has now been implemented and it's called Navicare. The model comprises a care navigation team the physical hub and information services with virtual facilities. The very first Navicare hub was established late last year in the Isaac region and it's already received tremendous support. And the beauty of this model is that it caters for um, a specific local community but it also has sufficient flexibility to adapt to other regions and it's guided by the evidence-based exploration, preparation, implementation and sustainment uh, framework. Uh, Navicare hasn't just received uh, referrals from the Isaac region, it's also received referrals from Mackay, from Whitsundays, Central Highlands, Rockhampton and even New South Wales in its short time that it's been operating. Uh, and the role of Wesley Medical Research as a research institute um, is to develop this model, it's to pilot the model, and ideally we do so for about three years, and importantly, to capture the right data and evaluate the effectiveness of this model and adapt it as required to fit the community needs. And ideally, we'd have sufficient funding to establish Navicare across three regional uh, Queensland communities. And it would include an economic uh, evaluation over time and then potentially transition Navicare to existing mental health service providers. And you know, you've already heard from Outback Futures with whom we've had multiple conversations and, and so forth. Um, so piloting Navicare is critical to establishing an evidence base for scaling up and sustaining improved access to mental health services in regional Queenslanders linking help seekers with the support they need. And I'll now introduce you to Kelly McGrath, our first mental health care navigator. Thank Thanks, you. Claudia. Um, I'd also like to thank the committee for this opportunity to highlight some of the dis disparities that rural and remote Queenslanders face in accessing mental health support. So as a mental health care navigator, my role is to connect individuals with mental health support. When I first went into the Isaac region, uh, I had expected that there would be a reasonably limited number of on-the-ground psychology services. What I, I was absolutely shocked to find that there were less than I could count on one hand, and one of those only services, their employee assistance program contracts, so the general public couldn't access it. 
for a local government area of more than 58,000 square kilometres to say that this is inadequate mental health support is an understatement. Navicare has made significant progress in overcoming uh, some of these issues by developing critical relationships with a number of telehealth psychology providers, including some of the wonderful um, organisations that you've already heard from today. Now, while those services have been invaluable in enabling Navicare to connect help seekers with the psych psychological supports that they need, telehealth is not an option for some populations, and we've found that in our experience. Um, in addition to this, recent Medicare cuts have all but eliminated bulk billing telepsychiatry appointments, and 70% of Navicare's client base have delayed accessing mental health support because they simply can't afford it even at a lower rate. So even since our launch in November, the role of the mental health care navigator has expanded and evolved. Very quickly it became apparent that the social, economic and environmental factors that underpin a person's need for seeking mental health support need to be addressed concurrently with the psychological intervention. Without doing so, it's the equivalent of treating a broken leg with a Band-Aid. It just doesn't work. I've had to link clients to essential services such as emergency financial relief, legal supports, emergency housing, employment supports, and community and social uh, supports as well. And these key linkages are now a key feature of the role of the mental health care navigator. Since our launch in November 2021, we've received up to 21 new referrals each month. I'm case man managing 51 clients. Our oldest client is 73 years old. Our youngest is four. One third of Navicare's clients are under the age of 18 years, and half of these are presenting with self-harm or suicidal ideation. I work at the coalface of the mental health care landscape, and I have seen firsthand the enormous benefit that help seekers uh, receive when accessing the right mental health care at the right time. Our preliminary data demonstrates that these impacts are life-changing, not just on a personal level, but have enormous potential to positively impact the community, the economy and the health system. Some of our clients have re-engaged in the workforce for the first time in decades. They've stopped abusing drugs and alcohol. Some have stopped self-harming and having thoughts of suicide, which reduces the load on the health system. The Navicare model was co-designed with the community and it is making a genuine difference. Should the funding be available to pilot the pro program for three years, our stringent evaluation expects to demonstrate very strong social, community and potentially large economic benefits. Mental health care navigation fills a critical gap that is imperative to giving each help seeker the uh, opportunity for a full recovery and the opportunity to live a happy, healthy and fulfilling life. Rural and remote Queenslanders deserve this. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so Navicare uh, as a model is really uh, a care sort of um, coordination uh, ac uh, activity or is it more than that? Uh, it is It is so many things. Uh, yes, it is care coordination, but there's also a lot of community engagement. Mm -hmm. We're working actively to uh, destigmatize mental health amongst the community, raise awareness of the fact that mental health supports do exist, maybe not physically on the ground, um, but we can provide those key linkages. Mm. So it's not just about sort of connecting people to sort of one-on-one -on -one treatment type services is, is a broader remit than, than that? Absolutely. Yeah, okay. And But it would be fair to say that, from what you've uh, presented today, that um, while it's good to be trying to navigate people towards various uh, services and, 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 and individual treatments, if they're not there, it must be very challenging to, um, to help people. It absolutely has been uh, a challenge, uh, which is why we um, had to think outside the box and we've engaged with a number of online psychology platforms. Rural Health Connect are one of our, our go-tos. Mm. <laughs> They're on speed dial for us. Um, and so in developing those relationships, they were critical in enabling Navicare uh, to do, uh, to perform that role of linking help seekers with essential supports. Mm. And it's probably, I mean, 
if you're operating in an area like that, it's possibly the first time someone's gone in and had actually had a reasonable look at what services are, you know, available from a holistic perspective. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yes. So. Um, when we began this work, we didn't really know, know what the landscape looked, looked like ourselves. And so it was very interesting to be engaging the various different stakeholders and understanding exactly what was going on and just how much support uh, was required. We are really pleased to have uh, the Mayor of uh, Isaac Regional Council as basically the champion for this. And she was in tears when we launched in November last year. So really pleased that it's had this uptake uh, and that we have this backing of the community. Yep, she's an impressive woman, uh, Anne. Uh, and you services obviously work towards, work with uh, people affected by alcohol and other drugs as well. Um, you would have been aware of the social isolation report that was um, uh, delivered in Parliament uh, previously, again, identifying that need to sort of support people and connect people into their community. Is there this, are you working in both of those spaces as well, the alcohol and other drugs and the social isolation? Uh, I do connect people with the alcohol and drug supports as necessary. They also, when they identify that um, clients that have been taken into their programs, if they have certain uh, risk factors like self-harm and suicidal ideation, they will then refer to Navicare um, for that higher level psychological support that they feel that client needs. So it's a, it's a two-way street. How do people find Navicare? Well, we like we, what we've heard, and it's really difficult when you're sort of the I mean, when you've got someone like the, the Mayor of um, Moranba talking you up, I'm sure it's not that hard, but... <laughs> what we've been told is that, uh, you know, everybody's quite excited and, in fact, we have some um, uh, uh, reference letters from various different stakeholders uh, and we've, we've got written support from, you know, uh, the Greater Whitsundays uh, Community Development, from the Mackay uh, Mayor, from the uh, Isaac Mayor, um, we've visited the North Queensland Patch and had discussions with them. We've spoken to the Assistant Health Minister. We're engaging um, mining communities as well. So we've spoke, and we're actually funded by a, a corporate donor at this point uh, for a period of time. So we're very much hoping that we'll be able to uh, extend uh, this work. Thank you. Mike Jay, the member for Mogul, for a question. Uh, thanks very much, Chair. And before I ask my question, I will declare a conflict. Uh, to the committee, and that's just I am a former board member of Wesley Medical Research, and I continue to be a specialist physician member of Wesley Medical Research as an accredited visiting, visiting medical officer of Wesley. Um, but congratulations on this submission. This looks really exciting, and the collaboration between various organisations, mayors, as you've outlined, from a local government perspective, um, mining, and also with uh, people from Rural Health Connect and Outback Futures as well. Um, what I really wanted to ask was the specific additional funding that's needed for Navicare, um, what that would be, just to get a sense from a government perspective of, of what would be of assistance to augment what already exists there. And then with the um, evaluation framework with um, the Australian Centre for Health Services Innovation, OSHI, um, that economic, social and health evaluation, what's sort of planned with that? Because when I read the submission, the applicability of what's been already achieved to date um, has wider implications, I guess, for other geographical areas um, and particularly with the collaboration amongst various stakeholders. So to try and give complete success to the pilot as far as you know the funding that's needed, but also the evaluation, if you could just outline a little bit more about that. Thank you. Um, so uh, we, we've been saying we've got funding for 12 months, but that 12 months quickly becomes six months. And we'd really like to be able to have Kelly in Moranbah for three years at least. Um, the, the funding that we're requesting is to support Kelly's role. Uh, the lease that comes with that, the travel, the um, telehealth services, etc. We'd also like to establish other hubs um, in regional Queensland uh, and follow the same model that we've uh, already used to define what uh, specific needs each community need and then also establish that um, the database we've we've got a database for um, you know the current hub but we need to establish the databases for the others to be able to measure the outcomes 
Uh, indeed, the, the relationship with OSHI is fantastic. Um, they do bring health economics, um, implementation science, uh, biostatistics and so forth um, expertise. And uh, the idea is that should this model um, be um, demonstrated to be successful, we could actually apply it in other parts even of the country. So it is absolutely flexible enough to be implemented elsewhere. Mm. Thank you. And could it be implemented in sort of urban settings as well? I, th I, wouldn't, I wouldn't see why not. Uh, obviously that first part of the, um, the uh, model needs to be uh, conducted. So in terms of exploring the local needs and how, they, um, how to adapt Navicare to the individual community is important. Um, yeah, it does follow that same framework. Thank you. I'll go to uh, the member for Palmerston. Thank you both for being here. Kelly, you mentioned in your initial um, remarks that Medicare cuts to telephone psychiatry had had a big, big impact on these communities. Can you please elaborate and unpack that a little bit for us? What were the cuts? What was the impact? Um, the detail of the cuts, I'm, I, I can't tell you, you know, the, dollar, the, the dollar value, but they have removed um, a lot of uh, the bulk billing um, loading for certain um, telehealth, or sorry, telepsychiatry services, particularly for one-off assessments. And uh, our local GPs, uh, one of our two of our letters of support, one from a GP, one from a practice nurse, have highlighted how significantly that has impacted their ability to get those one-off psych psychiatric assessments. Um, it has you know, definitely been an issue. I have a number of complex cases where psychiatric evaluation has been warranted, but the individual is not at crisis point, so the acute care team can't assess them, and there's no other options if you live you know, four hours from Mackay um, to get that psychiatric evaluation. So it has very much impacted the community. Are you free to share those letters of support with the community? Absolutely. We do have a document that we'd like to table at the end of this that has all of those and um, stories of success. Thank you so much. Chair? Uh, I'll just go to the member for South Brisbane first. Thank you, Chair. Um, Kelly, I was hoping you could elaborate on um, what you were talking about in relation to referring people to other social services. and. Um, uh, to my mind, that kind of speaks to an understanding of mental health as a, as a social condition rather than um, something that's very individual. Could you talk a bit about the services that you're referring people to and that kind of connection between um, those broader factors in mental health? Absolutely. Um, and, you know, I'll preface this by saying each individual and each individual case is, is different, but um, if someone is skipping meals and is only eating, you know, toast and cups of tea for days on end and they're living in their car, um, you could throw as much psychological support at, at them as you want and it's not going to be effective because until you take away some of those fundamental stresses, um, you know, it, the, the intervention isn't going to be successful. So when we do an intake, we sit down and we just have a chat with a person and we talk about all the different things that are going on in their life and if, you know, they are unemployed, it's like, hey, you know, can you afford groceries and can you afford to pay your bills? And so we can link them in with all these, you know, free legal services, emergency food vouchers. Um, we've got uh, rural family support uh, outreach programs that provide assistance um, in primary schools to support kids who are struggling with various um, things there. We link people with employment employment agencies and, and offer them skilling options. So our database doesn't just contain mental health services, uh, it contains as many of those local wraparound support providers um, that we can find uh, and we can access and we can link our clients in because it, that holistic approach is absolutely essential to full recovery. Thank you. And a follow-up, Chair, if I may. Um, I wonder if you could also elaborate on the specific risks facing people in the agricultural sector um, that your submission touched on. Shall we do that? Yep. Um, so in the agricultural um, 
you know, in agriculture, you know, there are a lot of stresses. They're subject to a lot of environmental um, disasters, floods, droughts, cyclones, bushfires, you know, everything. And so they're very much um, on tenterhooks at times and they can lose everything economically uh, in the blink of an eye. Uh, and that can be really, really stressful. And so we do find uh, significantly elevated ri uh, rates of suicide in the agricultural area compared to you know, the general population. On top of those um, you know, very unique stresses, they tend to also have greater access to lethal means, firearms, poisons, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Might go to the deputy chair for a question. <laughs> Thanks, chair. Um, uh, look, it, 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 it appears to be a great initiative, and um, I, I guess there's some similarities there with uh, the previous group that we saw around some of their programs. Um, I just had a sort of a technical question, really. Um, in your proposal, you talk about Mitsubishi Development Proprietary Limited. Um, I was just wondering, are they? Um, are they just a mining company that have invested in the trial to support you, or is this a particular um, software product or um, um, infrastructure product, product that Navicare depends on to actually function? No, they're, they're our co corporate donor, so the former is okay. they are. Um, yeah. uh, obviously, they are interested in the mining community. And so wanted yep. to support the mental health and well-being of people in that region and had provided some initial funding for us to conduct this work. Yeah. And did you, I don't know if you heard some of the um, presentation from the previous group, uh, but they, they, they sort of talked a little bit about, um, um, I suppose, establishing sort of um, strong connections with each community. Um, does Navicare provide an opportunity for that or is it or would it be simply more be a um just a broader sort of telehealth um online sort of product well navicare is as based physically in the more youth community center so um those okay. that, are, that are seeking support have an opportunity to speak with kelly uh, and have that initial conversation and should they require you know, telehealth services and um, Kelly will connect them with them. Otherwise, it may be, you know, whether it's housing or, um, you know, domestic violence support, wherever it might be, uh, she's able to, to do that. Um, but we are physically placed in the Moorumbaya Youth Community Centre at this point. And we also have a telehealth facility um, at the Moorumbaya Youth and Community Centre. So if people don't have reliable access to internet, and I find that particularly in the older population, they're very hesitant to use telehealth. But with me being an actual human who can make them a cup of tea uh, and set up the computer for them before they go into their telehealth system, uh, sorry, appointment, it, it really bridges some of that, that gap and addresses some of the hesitancy that some populations feel about fully um, telehealth services. Um, I'll just go to the member. Yeah, I, yeah, thank you. Sorry, I'll go to the member for Mogul. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, Claudia, if I could just come back to the um, submission as well, and just with the reference there from Wesley Medical Research in relation to the establishment of the COVID-19 Rapid Response Research Centre, which was established in April of 2020, um, are there any particular, you know, trends in data or research that the Wesley Medical Research is sort of seeing with respect to COVID over the last two years in the body of, of work that you sort of do within Wesley Medical Research and applicability to mental health particularly, but if there are any other trends that, that you're capturing as well? So just to explain how this sits with that COVID-19 Rapid Response Research Centre, as you all know, March of 2020, uh, we went into lockdown and it just so happened that we were running a grant round at the, at the time and we had five applications from across the United Care Hospitals uh, uh, for COVID-19 research. And knowing that uh, um, this funding that we also had for mental health support, um, we, we ended up pu pulling together a number of different projects and put them under the banner of the COVID-19 Rapid Response Research Centre, including this. At the time, there was modelling that indicated that suicide rates would double within 12 months. Um, 12 months later, and, and today, we know that that wasn't the case. However, what has happened is a massive uh, increase 
in um, people wanting to access mental health services. And in fact, you know, Lifeline, who's also part of the Uniting Care, the broader Uniting Care um, Queensland uh, group, have shown that they've had a 50% increase um, in or, or more in people trying to access support. So I think that's what the issue is. It's not so much that more people are um, committing suicide, it's that more people just need some help. That's what the data is showing at this point. Thank you. Thank you. I'll go to the member for Palmerstone for a question. I had a, I've got a very simple question, which is you talked about your ability to set people up for their telehealth, um, make them a cup of tea. So are the telehealth consultations occurring in a, in a shop front is not the right word, but in a given location that people attend or are you going into their homes? Um, so we are, we've established um, a telehealth hub at the Morumbai Youth and Community Centre. So there are a large number of other community services that run out of that area. So it's a very uh, non-confronting uh, place to go for your mental health support. A lot of the people don't have to use our telehealth facility. They can access the telehealth appointments from their phone, from their laptop, from their desktop computer. But there are people who they're on a limited income. They don't have data or like I said, the elderly people in particular, they like to, to come in and they don't want to fumble around with the computer and the links, and we can help them with that. Great, thank you. That's, Any further uh, questions? Yeah. Look, I'd like to uh, thank you uh, for the work that you're doing, um, and thank you for the submission and for appearing here today. It really uh, was a fascinating uh, submission, and um, we've certainly heard a lot about the need for navigation, care coordination, case management. So it's a, some, a very interesting model that you're rolling out there. Um, I don't think we took any questions on notice, did we? No. So um, with that, I'd like to thank you for appearing, and uh, we'll break for lunch. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. Can we possibly table um, our document? Uh, yes, of course. Mary will grab that.